I told you we were going to check in on one of the most common non-communicable diseases. Cancer probably by far uh, is probably one of the health issues uh, that affects everyone. If it hasn't affected you personally, uh, it probably affects somebody that you care about. And I think the numbers are quite staggering. If you look at cancer across the board, in 2012, for example, 14 million cases were diagnosed and more than 8 million people died. And at this rate, the number of new cases is expected to rise by about 70% over the next two decades. Good health policy is something very helpful, uh, but there's also actions that people can take. And joining me now to talk about this is Dr. Douglas Betcher, who is the Director for the Prevention of Non-Communicable Diseases at WHO, and Dr. Marlene Timmerman, who is back with us today, uh, the Director of Reproductive Health at WHO. Douglas, let me start with you. What is the global situation of cancer? The uh, situation now is that uh, cancer is the uh, largest, largest killer in many countries, especially high-income countries, but the second largest killer overall in the world, second to uh, hypertension and uh, stroke. Kills about eight, uh, 8 million people per year, and there is about uh, 14 million uh, new cases of cancer uh, recorded per year now, and that's projected to increase by about 70% uh, over the next uh, two decades. And it's, it's something that touches each and every one of our lives. Mm -hmm. Either we have suffered cancers ourselves, or we have family members or friends. And um, the good news is, and we'll speak more about that, is that uh, probably up to a half of cancers can be prevented by uh, actions that both individuals can take, but not only on their own governments and, uh, and societies, whole of societies, have to take responsible actions too, and we can talk more about that. Yeah, do that for me if you would. Talk about what are, what are some of the risk factors for cancer, and what can individuals, what can people do uh, to reduce their chance? So some of the big uh, risk factors about uh, accounting for about a third of uh, all cancers uh, are um, un the triad, the harmful triad of, of unhealthy diets, uh, overweight and obesity, and sedentary lifestyles. Uh, tobacco use. Uh, tobacco use accounts for about 20% of all cancers in the world and 80% of, uh, of lung cancers in the, in, in the world. And um, when we look at, uh, I was involved in an interesting uh, project uh, last year, a group of experts brought together by the International Agency for Research in Cancer. It's an organization that's part of WHO but has a certain degree of autonomy, sits in Lyon. And they brought together a number of experts for us to look at, uh, at uh, what individuals could do as well to, to prevent cancer. But again, not getting governments mm -hmm. off the hook because we, right. we don't want to fall prey to the, the mantras, the corrupt mantras of the tobacco companies, for example, that say it's all about individual choice, which is wrong. But um, some of the individual, uh, they listed 12 different um, advice points, proof points that individuals could take action on. Poor. So don't smoke or stop smoking. It's never too late to stop. And link to that, uh, make sure your home and your workplace is smoke free. Um, uh, avoid harmful use of alcohol or better even than that, don't drink. Um, healthy, uh, healthy eating. So uh, low salt, uh, less saturated fats, the sort of Mediterranean diets, more fruits and vegetables. Uh, also, um, more physical activity. We live in a, uh, a uh, surfing, a web surfing, uh, television watching, cable connected uh, society, and uh, we need. Uh, the fact is, the, the the world is getting too heavy, and uh, and uh, along with that, WHO recommends then that uh, at least for adults, we should have at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise per day or 150 uh, minutes per week, and most of us aren't doing that. Yeah. Marlene, let me come to you for just a minute. One of these cancers is quite specific uh, to women, and I'm thinking of cervical cancer here. It occurs worldwide, and uh, a lot of the women who die from it happen to be in less developed countries. Can you talk about this for just a minute? Yes, indeed. In women, the most common cancers are breast cancer and cervical cancer, cancer of the, the uterus, the entry of the uterus. So this one is actually entirely preventable. It is caused by a mm -hmm. sexually transmitted uh, virus, the human papilloma virus. 
and it is very common. Most sexually active uh, adults will come, will have this virus sooner or later, but very few will develop cervix cancer. Now, in the in developed countries, uh, there are a lot of programs to prevent, screen, early detection, early treatment. So there, few women die of cervix cancer. But in developing countries, there are very few uh, screening programs and treatment. And globally, there are still 290,000 women who die every year of cervix cancer, which is a completely, I mean, it's preventable, mm -hmm. detectable, treatable. So we should not accept this. So what can be done? What can be done a lot. First mm -hmm. of all, good health education and communication so that everyone, girls, women, but also men and boys, mm -hmm. they know that this is a sexually transmitted infection. That's number one. Number two, now we are very lucky that we have a new approach, with, which is a vaccine. The vaccine, it's called the HPV vaccine, human papilloma virus vaccine. That's the virus. That's the mm -hmm. virus, so a vaccine against the virus. And that is most effective if you give it before you are sexually active, before you, you are maybe infected with that virus. So young girls, school girls around the age of 11, 12, 13 should, be, uh, should have access to the vaccine. Um, the, the bad news is that the vaccine is quite expensive, but now there is kind of a global effort. Gavi, governments, partners are putting a lot of energy and money to uh, allow access to the vaccine also in developing countries. So this is great. The good news is also that before we used, we needed three injections. Now we are, studies have shown that even with two, injections of a P HPV vaccine, you can protect yourself. Then you still need screening programs. But the good news there is once you are detected in an early stage of the evolution to cervix cancer in a precancerous stage, you can have a very easy, simple treatment. So it is our duty okay. to give access to education vaccine but also to screening and treatment in all women in the world because it doesn't cost that much it is feasible and i'm very happy that now thanks to many efforts globally that we see that also in developing countries these efforts are increasing and more and more women and girls get access to prevention screening and early treatment Wonderful. Lots of work to do there, uh, but very important work. These are questions that are coming in from Twitter, but I don't have time to ask them to you. I'm sorry, you did cover uh, the first one, which was how can we take actions to prevent cancer. Unfortunately, we don't have time for the second one, but it just goes to show uh, how much people care about cancer and cancer prevention because it does affect so many people. Thank you both for coming by. Very much. Uh, we appreciate it. Marlene, good to see you again. She's a repeat offender here <laughs> at the show.